Hi everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com and WeddingsByHeather.tv. And if you need help with your workflow, please check out my free video series available on my website. In this week's video, we're going to repair the cold sore on her lip. And it seems like we've been repairing a lot of cold sores lately. A friend of mine sent me this photo from a senior session that she did a few weeks ago. And she tried to use the techniques that I outlined in my two previous videos. I have one for Lightroom and one for Photoshop. But this was actually a little bit trickier than that. And I wouldn't say it's difficult. It you just have to use a different technique. And you guys understand that this is not about the cold sore, right? This is about learning new and different techniques to apply to any type of blemish on your photograph. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in with a Command Plus or Control Plus on the PC and get really close into her lip space bar to grab my pan tool, and there we go. So my first line of defense for something like this is to try the clone stamp tool. So what I'm gonna do is create a new layer because I don't wanna use the clone stamp on my background layer and destroy pixels. We don't destroy pixels in our home, so I don't think that you should either. <laughs> We're gonna create a new blank layer to work on. So the way you do that in Photoshop without any questions being asked is you press basically all of the modifier keys. So that's Command, Option, Shift, that's Control, Alt, Shift, and then the letter N. And when you do that, you will get a new blank layer without any questions asked, which I like. So then I'm gonna press S in order to get my clone stamp. So when I start clone stamping this photo, I, I don't think that I wanna do it quite at 100% because what's gonna happen is if I Alt, or option click to define my source and then I start to brush see it's not it's just gonna not look right so I'm gonna undo that with a command option Z that's control alt Z on the PC and I want to use a clone stamp but I don't want to use it with 100% flow so you'll notice in the tool options bar that I have my mode set to normal my opacity is at 100% and my flow is at 100% and my flow uh, works sort of like an airbrush, right? And that is, you can build up the effect. So that's what I wanna use. And opacity is the upper level of that. So in order to access that flow, I could, but I wouldn't, <laughs> I could take my mouse and place it over the word flow and get a scrubby slider and then click and drag to the left or click and drag to the right in order to bring that down. But there's this really neat keyboard shortcut. Okay, so first of all, if you have any brush tool in Photoshop, clone stamp or the brush tool, and you press any of your numeric keys, so for instance, if I press three right now, you'll notice it just changed my opacity to 30%. If I press four, it will change it to 40. And if I rapidly press something like five, six, it will change it to 56. And I'm gonna place that back to 100 by quickly pressing one, zero, zero. But if I want to do that with the flow, all I need to do is hold down the shift key. And so when I hold down shift, I'm going to take that flow to about 20%. So shift and the number will give you the flow that you like. Okay, I'm going to again define my source by alt or option clicking just right about here. And there's a bit of a dark spot right there. So I'm going to fix that. Alt or option click to define a new source here. And I'm just going to brush over this. I am constantly defining a new source. So I'm alt or option clicking and then brushing over that area. And uh, this has gone beyond the edge of the lip. So I'm gonna alt or option click here and just kind of like blend that in a little bit. And because I have that flow set to 20%, I can build it up and it looks a lot better. Okay, I'm gonna alt or option click here. Just a little bit dark right there, a little bit different right there. And this looks to me like it's going in a pretty good direction, but there's one thing I noticed when I did this, and this goes along with the same technique that we used in the, in the previous Photoshop video. But if I look at the before and after, it's, it just looks blotchy to me, and I am not digging that. So let me brush over this area just a little bit more. So what I decided to do with this photo is click on the background layer to select it, press M on my keyboard in order to select the marquee tool. I'm going to click and drag this side of the lip. I'm going to right click inside of this selection in layer via copy. I'm gonna move this layer two, which is that copied layer above layer one, which is the layer that I just used the clone stamp on. V on my keyboard in order to access my move tool. And you'll see I have this section of the lip on layer two. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna to go to the file menu and I'm gonna choose edit transform, and I'm gonna flip this horizontal. Edit, 
transform, flip horizontal. And then I have this section that I can place over here. Obviously, it's at a different angle. That is okay. I'm going to press Command T. That's Control T on the PC. Whoops, I pressed Command or Control R. That was for my rulers. Command T, Control T. And I'm going to rotate this by putting my cursor on the outer edge and just kind of line up this lip a little bit better until I have it. And I'm, I'm mostly interested in that left edge. So I'm, I'm not so worried that it's not lining up on the right because I'm going to mask that out in a moment. I'm going to press enter or return to commit that change. I'm going to add a layer mask to layer two by clicking on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers palette. B on my keyboard in order to access my brush tool. I'm looking in my options bar. I see that I'm a normal mode in a normal mode with opacity 100 and a flow of 100. And I have my black brush. I can see that in my tool palette so that I can conceal portions of layer two. Remember when using layer masks, white reveals, black conceals. So right now I'm painting with a black brush to conceal the portions of layer two that I don't wish to see. So I'm just going to brush over it until everything looks pretty good. And then I'm going to turn that layer off so you can see and then on. And I'm going to just do a little bit more brushing to refine this edge over here. And again, this is without that layer and with that layer. And I'm going to drop the opacity of it slightly just so it blends in a little bit better. But what I want you to see is the, the difference. Okay, first of all, let's look at the overall before and after. Remember, you can hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and then click the visibility icon on the background layer to turn all of the layers off or toggle them all back on. So you see how much better that looks. But here it is with just the clone stamp. So with the clone stamp, I felt like it looked kind of blotchy and messy. But with that layer two, it sort of refined that. Let's go ahead and zoom out with Command minus or Control minus on the PC. And we're gonna look at the overall again before and after. Wow, I think that made a huge difference. It looks great. It was just a matter of taking it one step further by copying the good section of the lip and then flipping it horizontally to place it on the other side. And I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.